Just got to dumb things down. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Kenny. Yeah, you guys <laughs> just made up, and now you're already doing this. I didn't say anything. Fortunately, I didn't have my headphones on, so I didn't hear a word that you said, Rico, and well, that sounds like it's for the best. Yeah, you know what? I'm just going to bite my tongue. It's All probably right. for the best. Anyway, Rico, why don't you set this up? Because the Lions are picking at six, and I think initially in the draft process, we thought, all the good guys are going to go in the top five. This sucks. No one yeah. wants to pick at six, and it's why you entertain. Should you trade up? And, and now we're starting to consider maybe a guy or two might actually fall. Well, it, it started as I'm doing the show prep, and I came across an article that uh, Amy Dash, she's the editor of League of Justice, and they kind of combine sports and the legal system. So whenever something's going down, I like to read that. And with the Jalen Carter situation, uh, it was an interesting take that they had uh, based on the charges stemming from the January crash that killed his teammate, Devin Whitlock, and a member of the team's uh, recruitment staff, uh, Chandler LaCroix. Uh, he was allegedly racing against they were drag racing yeah allegedly drag allegedly, racing allegedly. at a high speed and two people died now you know there's a study by professor Stephen Wu that found that players with character issues fell about 15 spots in the draft nearly half of them are about a half around below the simulated qualified player with no pending legal issues meaning most guys that you thought were going to be a high draft pick, all of a sudden took a fall. Uh, you look at 2015, Lyle Collins. Yeah, that's a great one. Lyle Collins went undrafted, okay, because he had pending uh, things where he, regarding the death of a woman he had been in a relationship with. You had Laramie Tunsil in 2016, the alleged, you know, bong photo. Oh, he's a pothead. He fell out of the top you know, 10. His, his stepfather puts that photo out on draft day. Uh, you had Geno Smith, who they thought was going to be a first rounder. Concerns about uh, his uh, playing performance. And you had Jameis Winston. He was the only one. He still went number one overall, even though he had pending civil suit uh, alleging sexual assault. Mm -hmm. He still went number one. But for the most part, and, and, and then you could also look at Micah Parsons. Yep. Micah Parsons was supposed to go around three or four, ended up going 11 to Dallas. I say all that to say, now with the fact of Jalen Carter and all of this stuff going down, they were also talking, saying that, you know what? The Bears, Lions, and Chiefs are three of the bottom four teams against the Rush in the 2022 season have a chance at getting Carter. And they were saying that really it boils down to the fact that will Dan Campbell – after the Lions pick at number six, there's no clear landing spot for Carter until the Packers at 15. It's also saying that, you know, it's possible Dan Campbell may take a chance on Carter if he falls in their lap. Carter might thrive under their discipline and locker room structure. If not, draft day could be a very long day for Carter. Three weeks ago, if I told you <laughs> Jalen Carter would be available at number six, you would snatch that up, you would take that pick. It's now turning out that it may end up that way that teams may pass and say, I don't know how this is going to end. I don't know if you're going to be a cancer or not. I don't know if you're going to disrupt my locker room. Yeah, because there's a couple things at play here. There's the legal process, and then my understanding is it's only a misdemeanor. The guy's not going to end up in jail, but you worry about maturity. Right. You worry about the character, the person that you're putting in your locker and room. It wouldn't be unheard of for him to fall. In terms of legal ramifications, given the absence of a criminal record, it is unlikely that Carter will serve prison time and may merely receive probation if convicted or if a plea deal is worked out. Carter's ability to play will not likely be compromised. Okay. So if he's there at six, it adds a wrinkle. If there is no wrinkle. If he is there at six... I don't care if every quarterback that you want is sitting there. Now, what if Bryce you Young measures at four foot eleven and he's sitting there at six? You would you'd have to take him, right? No. Over Carter. If Bryce Young and Jalen Carter were both sitting there at six, you take Carter. You take Carter. And you know what you do after that? You take Carter. This is a no brainer. This is a guy that was clearly people thought was going to be the number one pick or the number two pick of the draft. You got an opportunity because he's going to fall because of character issues. 
Lions went on earlier this week saying they're embracing the villain. Mm -hmm. How much are you willing to embrace the villain, Detroit? Because this is a no-brainer to me. So I'm going to ask the question. Lions fans, Jalen Carter sitting there at six because of the legal things that are going on. Teams are passing on him, wondering about his character. Are you upset if the Lions select him? Because I'm not. Hmm. I think that at that point, you got lucky. Because you got a guy that you now pair up with Aiden. And you pair up with everybody else you got on that defense. Guess what you're not going to be doing next year? You're not going to have Seattle running up and down the field, not getting a fourth down stop. That ends. That's done. You got somebody that you're controlling the contract. He's young. Yeah, I'll worry about the quarterback later. I'll give you – I'll let you take a quarterback at a – they could take Anthony Richardson at 18. <laughs> and if you know how Rico feels about him, this is quite the statement. Jalen Carter, I wouldn't hesitate to draft him if he was there at six, okay? I'm not concerned about the reports to the degree that I wouldn't draft a guy. Clearly, you're going to do your homework on him and make sure there's nothing wrong between the ears. But the guy's a game breaker, game changer. We fought about this before. He's not just a run stopper, which was my criticism of his teammate a year ago. He's also a guy that will maul people, get in the backfield, TFLs, sacks, doesn't matter if the corner slipped and fell, the play's over, Jalen Carter's home. I wouldn't hesitate to draft him. Unless, unless, Bryce Young also takes the same tumble. You talk about a guy that's supposed to go number one overall, Bryce Young is the most talented quarterback in this year's draft. There's only one knock, size. He can make every throw. He's poised. He's calm. He's clutch. If he takes a tumble because everybody overthinks themselves and says, I want Will Levis. He looks the part. I want Anthony Richardson. He looks the part, sounds the part. If Bryce Young, for whatever reason, falls to six, that would be the only trump card I'd put on you. You would take Bryce Young over Jalen Carter. I would. A short Bryce Young. Yes, I'm aware. You know Wojo would have a field day with this. Right, because the only way he's there at six is, is if, if he's, he's short. short. I read an article today in The mm. Ringer. You're not the only one that was doing research. Ooh. And they had the charts and the graphs and the, the y-axis and the x. They showed he would be like the smallest first-round quarterback ever drafted. Height and weight, Bryce Young. So it would be a gamble. But I would be saying you have access to the number one quarterback in the draft, a franchise guy that opens up a 10- to 12-year window for this team. Cheap, talented, clutch. You put him behind a great O-line. You have his teammate, Jamison Williams. You were willing to stash him a year ago. You'd be stashing Bryce this time. That's an all-bets-are-off kind of move. If Jalen Carter's there at six, that's your all-bets-are-off guy. Yeah. If Bryce Young is there at six, that's an all-bets-are-off guy for me. Thing. If they both are there at six, I'm still taking Carter. Because you, you, you've you now got a guy that can anchor this defense to go – he will make Aiden better. He yes. will make he will make Houston better. He will make Rodriguez better. He will make Okuda. He will make everybody better. Mm -hmm. Just him by himself. No dispute. Rico, Rico, think about this. The last two seasons, the Lions had a guy they loved fall in their lap. Yes. Two years ago, it was Panay Sewell, and I thought he was the best non-quarterback in that draft. And the Lions got a chance to pick him at seven. Last year, I thought the best player in the entire draft was Aiden Hutchinson. They didn't have the number one pick. They got him anyway. This year's draft, you could make the case, Jalen Carter, Will Anderson, 1A, 1B, right. the non-quarterbacks. Anderson's not falling to six. No. Carter might. Carter might. Because, it's, as I said, the, the, the data shows that guys who have some type of a criminal record, something that happens around this time, fall, on average, about 15 spots. And they're saying, the Lions at six, if, if the Lions pass on him, he could start falling all the way down to, I think they said, the, the the Packers. If the Lions don't take him. Here's the other thing to consider. There's only five teams picking in front of the Lions. Let's say three quarterbacks go. You only need two defenders. Will Anderson's one. If one of those defensive needy teams instead takes Tyree Wilson, who we talk about the combine and what you want to make of this, David pointed this out. He has an 86-inch wingspan. And they, they had him stand, you know, right. fingertip to fingertip. Context? It's within an inch of Giannis of the Bucks, But this means nothing, Dan Campbell. I'm just saying, if two defenders go and one's not Carter, he's on the board. What do you want to do? 248-539-9797. Kevin and Macomb, you're on 
Yeah, thanks for taking my call, guys. Hey. I feel that as long as Jalen Carter's found not guilty, then, yeah, I would take him in a heartbeat. And it, it got me thinking over while you guys were talking um, on hold that if the situation happened where they could even get where Carter dropped and they could move up to get Anderson, I mean, it, that would be like a pipe dream. But, I mean, you just, you just look at it. It's, it's all up front. They drafted uh, Hutchinson last year, and why not try to be great in one area? And not only that, it'll only support Hutchinson if you go for arguably the best player in the draft. I mean, the best players in the draft are it's Anderson and uh, Carter. And regardless of what happens at the Combine, I I mean, you look at a player like Terrell Suggs in the past who had an awful Combine, mm-hmm. and we all know how he ended up turning out. I just think we – you know, there's not much going on right now besides hockey, even though in Detroit we thankfully got stuff going on but for the future, hopefully. But it's, you know, we just he's going in on these numbers. And I just think it's – everybody wants a second a, a cornerback with, like, the first pick. And I just think yeah, – nah. I, I can't think of a cornerback who's won a Super Bowl for a team or had a – No, Kevin, you're, Kevin, Kevin, I, I think I'm you're right. I'm sitting there looking. If, if he's there – Three weeks ago, if I said you can get a chance, you can get Carter at six, every Lions fans would raise their hand. Hell yes. He may be there yeah. now. You absolutely have to And, take Kevin, it. I think you're right about corner versus defensive linemen, especially guys that get after the quarterback on the defensive line, because a corner can do his job flawlessly. And today they're going to run and measure, and you may love Gonzalez or Witherspoon or, or David's guy, Porter. You may love the corner. He might do the job perfectly. He blankets the receiver, eliminates him from the play, and guess what? Four other guys in a pattern, somebody else gets open, and it didn't matter what your corner did versus a defensive lineman. He does his job to the best of his ability. The play's over. It doesn't matter if anybody's open. Here's the beauty of it. You want to talk analytics. Yeah. You got a defensive lineman who could pressure the passer. It's why teams like the Eagles were so good. If you cut the time that your corners have to cover from five seconds to three seconds, doesn't sound like much big deal but it's a really big deal because at five seconds the receivers are now starting to freelance five seconds is the matt patricia defense yeah. where, you, where you leave your guys out to draw three seconds the quarterback really has time to look at two reads two. yep and get rid of the ball five seconds he can now hit about three four of his progressions and find the open guy that's how valuable a jalen carter would be on this defense i don't care so so long as he is not going to jail let me get that clear because I know something for the people in the back. Yeah. He's not in an orange jumpsuit. I'm drafting him. Lions said, hey, we're the villains. Go be the villains. Show me you're willing to get the player it takes to win, regardless of whether his he's got a check or pass. Didn't Dan Campbell say something this week? And I know there's been a million clips, that David, you've been sifting through. Did he have a comment about not wanting choir boys? He did. He said this yesterday. They were doing the 40 times. And yeah. he was – in on set with them doing, during the forty times, and he said, "Yes, they do not want choir boys. All that they don't want all choir boys is what he said." Gift, you brought it up. Sewell fell in your lap. Aiden fell in your lap. Mm-hmm. This one, Carter may fall in your lap. How would you feel about it? Would you take him at six? Is he the? Hey, all bets are off. Everything you thought about before the draft, all bets yeah, are off. You're guy. not on the clock long enough because it's going to be who's picking five. Seattle. Seattle makes the pick. The pick is in. Seattle selects blah, blah, blah. Lions are on the – wait, Lions are off the clock. <laughs> It'd and, be third straight year they sprint to the podium. Right, line, wait, why, why are the Lions on the stage already? Can you at least make it seem – no, I don't want to play your little game. We're taking them. 248-539-9797. I would have his jersey already <laughs> made up. I would. I love the conviction, and this is one position that you can't dispute. They need a guy in the interior of the defensive line. You want to mirror what you did on the O-line, you want to do it on the D-line. Sure. Jalen Carter's the guy that I'm lets you to, do is, it. Is somebody 88 on the Lions right now? <laughs> Rico's throwing away guys' jerseys. If, if he is, he's going to be cut. Done. He's cut. Look Give up the it. jersey. It's going to the rookie. All right, what do you do? He's there at six. You take him, right? It's 97-1.